Out of all the requests I get, the most are on flat earthers. I don't know why you guys enjoy this topic so much, but I'm here to fulfill a few requests. Usually I can only get to one video at a time, but today we're going to go ahead and tackle a few short ones. This first video is someone trying to disprove the globe by taking a spirit level on an airplane. Hi, I'm Daryl, and I'm a realist, also known as a flat earther. <laughs> I'm not sure if those are synonymous. In fact, maybe quite the opposite. One thing that we deal with as being flat earthers is uh, the scientific community. Uh, we'll post, post pictures, memes, we'll post videos, we'll post facts, figures, uh, different experiments that have been conducted uh, in the past, but uh, not so much recently. And that often results in people saying that we're discredited because we don't have any scientific backing for what, our, what we believe, although there's tons of evidence. I'm all for evidence. If you come up with proper evidence that shows the earth is flat, I'll listen. If you can prove that the earth is flat while at the same time disproving everything else we have that shows the earth is round, then be my guest. The thing is, there is already overwhelming evidence for a spherical earth. Disproving it isn't going to be easy. But if you can somehow do it, I will listen. It's just that there simply hasn't been anything convincing thus far. So, what I'd like to do is uh, submit a new experiment to the scientific community. This is going to be fucking amazing, isn't it? One thing that anybody can do, this is a simple experiment that anybody can conduct to uh, determine definitely that the earth is flat. Go down to your local hardware store, pick up one of these spirit levels, and take it on the plane with you. If we're living on a spinning ball, or a globe, that's uh, 25,000 miles in circumference around the equator, according to curvature math, then the plane should be constantly dipping its nose forward in order to compensate for the curvature um, regularly during flights. Sure, the plane has to dip its nose every so often to go around the curve, and I applaud any flat earther who thought of this idea when trying to disprove the globe. However, it's key to understand exactly how you're going to go about measuring this, and right off the bat I can tell you that a spirit level will not do the trick. What will do the trick, however, are certain types of gyroscopes, which by the way, if spun long enough, can show you the rotation of the earth even when just standing on the surface. But before I get into more detail, I'll let you do your little experiment first. Now that the plane's at cruising altitude, Let's start the time lapse. Alright, here's why the bubble in the spirit level will remain in the center throughout the duration of the flight. The nose of the plane is dipping, however, it's just simply not dipping fast or slow enough to see any obvious movement. The plane is dipping at the same rate in which the angle towards the Earth's center of gravity is changing, and as long as there's no dramatic altitude change, the bubble should remain in the center. Basically, the plane's angle adjusts at the same rate in which the direction of gravity alters. You know what would get the bubble to move though? If the plane went in a complete straight line, then had a sharp dip to adjust, then the bubble would definitely move, but that's not how planes fly. Anyway, that's enough of spirit levels. The next video sent to me that we will be watching is a video proving that the moon isn't 230,000 miles away. Roll the clip. You know, every once in a while I'd go outside to smoke a cigarette and I would look up and I would see this. Now it really, really didn't dawn on me necessarily what I was seeing, can you please tell us exactly what we're supposed to be looking at right now? What, the chemtrails? The sun? God damn it, what is it? Big, thick, and long-lasting. These things don't go anywhere. This is not condensation coming out of a Pratt & Whitney or a Rolls-Royce engine. Not None whatsoever. You know, there's a pattern with you conspiracy theorists. You people tend to believe in multiple conspiracies at once. Well, I'm not here to talk about contrails today. That's a topic for another video. But I do want to say how hilarious it is that these people think that there's just some magical compound out there that can brainwash us to the perfect extent that they claim it does. Come on, if we had such a good brainwashing substance, it would literally be magic, okay? Nothing like that exists. But before we continue, here's a hilarious clip of a person trying to get rid of chemtrails with a vinegar spray. So what I'm doing is I'm just spraying the vinegar, and the vinegar dissolves the uh, chem clouds. So that's what I'm doing. Ha <laughs> ha! That never gets old. See this video that I'm taking right now? I'm clearly, in the daytime, I'm zooming in on the moon. Let's watch this again. 
in the daylight, I'm zooming right in on the moon. So what's your concern here? The fact that you can zoom in on the moon or the fact that you can see the moon during daytime? Well, it's obvious that during certain times, the moon is visible during the day. And this happens a lot during sunrise or sunset in which the moon is at an angle to reflect the sun's light and is above the horizon. No surprise there. Now let's take a look at this. This is going to be a little comparison. Right over here is the Boston skyline. See it? And right there is the Prudential building, which if you Google it from my house to the Prudential, it's 4.7 miles away as the crow flies. Let's watch me zoom in on the Prudential building, shall we? I've got the Prudential right in my sights, and here I go. I'm zooming in. That's the Prudential building. See it? Let me adjust the tripod for a second, because as you zoom, it goes up. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Prudential building. You can almost read it because it says Prudential right there. That is as far as I can zoom out with a Nikon P900 to an object that I know the distance. Okay, now I just turned the camera up. There's the moon right there, 200 plus thousand miles away. Let's zoom in. Here we go. And as I'm doing it, there's another plane right there, aerosol spraying, but that's not today's subject, really. Here we go. Look how far I can zoom in on the moon. I mean, are you kidding me? What you fail to consider here is the size of the moon. Something far away but has an incredible size is going to be just as visible as a closer object that is smaller. I mean, I don't see how it can be more basic than that. And you're implying here that the moon is probably about or less than 4 miles away. In that case, feel free to hop onto an airplane and take a photograph of the fucking moon below you. Ridiculous. Get some help. Now time for the next video. A flat earther called Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole is trying his very best to explain the perspective of the sun on a flat earth model. Let's take a look. Unfortunately for you, perspective doesn't work like that. The only way you would see your cutout paper model of the sun travel in such a path is if the camera is below the plane in which you're observing from. Your camera is obviously below the string here. If you do that, then yes, the sun would seem to go below the horizon. However, that's not the case in the real world. On the earth, we are always standing on the surface. The point of observation is always above the earth's surface. You flat earthers keep saying perspective, but you really don't actually know what it entails. In this case, when objects move further and further away, they will appear to aggregate towards a single point. However, they will never go past this point, which means any part of the sun will never go past that point, and that includes the lower half of the sun. In other words, if the sun keeps going further away, it will shrink and appear to move towards the convergence point, but no part of the sun will ever go below the point of convergence, meaning that the sun on a flat earth model should never sink below or rise above from the horizon. Now it's time to move on to the last video. Here we have a flat earther trying to explain a problem of the Earth's orbit around the Sun. In this video clip, I want to have a look at time in relation to the Earth spin and as it orbits around the Sun. Keep in mind that if you start at this position, after one 360 degree rotation, you always end up facing the same direction. In other words, if it's 12 midday, so if you start out at midday, right and as the earth rotates and orbits around the sun your position will always be in the exact same position after each 24 hour rotation and so on as you orbit around the sun so in other words if you started at 12 midday after 180 degree rotation or after 180 days, you'd still face the same direction. Your time now should be 12 midnight. I applaud you for thinking of something new that I've never heard a flat earther mention before. However, it's still just as flawed as every other argument. See, a day as we know it, 24 hours, is not defined by the Earth's rotation in respect to itself. It's defined by the Earth's rotation in respect to the Sun, meaning that every 24 hours, the same part of the Earth will be facing the Sun. Do you know how long it takes for the Earth to make a full spin in respect to itself? 23 hours and 56 minutes. It takes the 4 extra minutes for the same side of the Earth to face the Sun again. If our clocks were adjusted to measure up to only 23 hours and 56 minutes, then yes, what you said here would be correct. After 6 months, 12 o'clock noon would then be midnight. However, that's simply not the case. 
I feel like some of you people don't even do the slightest bit of research before making videos. Surely you can find this information online with a simple Google search. Anyway, that's all the time I have today. To be honest, Flat Earth is not a topic I enjoy talking about very much, but you guys seem to like it so I keep making these videos. So show me how much you like it by leaving a comment or subscribing to this channel. I'll see you next week. Bye.